Hey guys, I know a lot of you watch my channel because you've got the itch and you're looking to make your next knife purchase, which I totally get because I'm also a knife guy. So I invite you to open the description of the video you're watching right now and click here on my Amazon store where I've compiled some of my very favorites. As you can see, my most recommended knives and my favorite budget knives are right at the top, but there's also categories like knife maintenance, pocket clips, knife storage and display, and then a whole bunch of knives by popular brands. There's something down here for everybody, so make sure you take a look. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the CJRB Cutlery Centros. Uh, this knife I think was made pretty famous here pretty recently. I am far from the first person to talk about it, uh, but I'm going to. And uh, actually the very first thing I'm going to say is this knife is ridiculously inexpensive for the materials used. There will be direct links right at the top of my description where you can pick up the version that you're seeing here and, and every other version of this knife that is available in terms of scale, color, and material. Seriously, it is inexpensive, and I'm going to do a full review on this knife. Um, but if you're not aware, you know, this knife has really kind of taken off, and a lot of people like it. Um, it is a great knife. I'm going to give you all of the information and tell you why I think so, but feel free to check it out. This uh, knife was sent to me directly from CJRB. I actually reached out to them after finding out about it and finding out, you know, what people were saying about it and how much people liked it and how inexpensive it was. And so um, I was like, hey, do you guys have one? I'd really like to take a look at it. And they sent me this. They, they were like, yeah, uh, well, they sent me this and they sent me another one that I'm also impressed with, which is great because, you know, I, I learned about Artisan Cutler, I want to say about a year and a I was like a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And then, you know, I thought that they were exclusively budget knives. And I find out they've got a high, a medium, and a low end. And then they have, or a budget end. And then they have CJRB, which is almost exclusively, I think exclusively budget. And uh, I've been really impressed with CJRB and a few artisan cutlery models. And they seem to really be taking off. So I'm happy to uh, have another one here. And I'll absolutely be keeping my eye on both CJRB and artisan cutlery uh, in the future. Anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. The overall length of the CJRB Centros coming in at 8 and it's like 8.3 inches overall. Blade length coming in at 3.6 and cutting edge also coming in at 3.6. That's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the uh, Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 coming in at almost exactly the same length. You guys, so the Rat 1 is like my my budget champion. You know, it's like, it's always the knife. Now, it's not my absolutely favorite budget knife of all time. Um, that title would go to the um, the Civivi Praxis. Um, but you can see here, um, the reason I'm telling you is, uh, you know, uh, up until this video, that's exactly how I felt. And uh, you can see here that this knife is very similar in overall length. There are some profile similarities, but we have a little bit smaller handle. We've got more meaningful cutting edge right here. And we're actually looking at G10 instead of nylon. And we're looking at the same steel, which is D2. Um, so that's pretty cool. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Uh, so actually, you know, yeah, I measured these the same. They are. The Spyderco PM2 and the CJRB Centros, it looks to be uh, that they are the exact same length. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in a little shorter at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver. Two items that are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in my Amazon store. Just pull open the link, pull open the category that says knife maintenance, and you should be able to find them pretty easily. I'm going to guess like pretty much every other, uh, by the way, this knife's made in China. Uh, all, a lot of um, modern knives nowadays are T8 on the pivot, and that is the case there. Sorry, I didn't show it. That would be T8. And whoops. And then the body screws are likely T6, which we'll go ahead and show right there. Always do that just to make sure people know that I'm using the bits that I'm saying I'm using. T6 and yeah, pocket clip, all those are going to be the same. So you guys know how I feel. 
Uh, I'd rather they were all T8. T6 is not a deal breaker. Just make sure that you are, um, you know, taking care when you're using that bit size so you don't strip anything out. Um, how's the action on this guy? Oh boy, the action's, the action's fun. Um, so it is smooth. It is running on bearings. It takes just slight encouragement to get it to um, fall back down. Um, this isn't the type of smooth, like, I mean, it's, it's really, really good, but just so people, I mean, I've talked about this in another, um, video before, uh, people are like, you can get full shot action on a sub $50 knife. You can, but there's a difference between tightness in the pivot, grittiness in the pivot and frictionless, uh, an absolutely glassy frictionless feeling in the pivot. Oftentimes it's some combination of, you know, really good dialed in detent. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's either like a little bit tight, but it's smooth or it's completely smooth and it's completely false shut or it's false shut, but there's a little bit of grittiness. Um, I wouldn't call this gritty. I would say what we have here is a fairly smooth pivot and you have to give it a little bit of uh, uh, wiggle to get it to close, but it's good. And the action, the actual deployment is fantastic. A plus on that because the thumb studs in the right place. It's very easy to deploy. You guys probably saw me do the reverse flick on this guy. This is a meat of your finger reverse flick, in my opinion. So you need to get not your fingernail, but the actual meat of your finger up underneath there. And then you're kind of firing it that way with your finger. But man, it works great. And it's on bearings. I love thumb stud knives that are on bearings. We don't see enough of those. And this is nice. Um, bearings, uh, yeah, you know, if you're going to go out and use this, yeah, you can get stuff in the bearings and it can slow things down. You just blow it out with compressed air. It'll be just fine. On top of that, this is a very inexpensive knife. So that kind of negates a lot of things. When it's, when it's super inexpensive, it kind of negates a lot of the worries. Of, Whoa, what if this happens? Well, the answer to a lot of that is it's probably not going to destroy your knife unless you're really beating on it. But if it does, eh, you just get another one. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's one of those things where if I ever broke my rat one, I'd be like, darn it. Well, I'm going to go get another rat. <laughs> It served its it served its purpose as long as I've had it, you know. So that it's one of those things where it's it's not like if I if I broke a blade on a four hundred dollar knife, I would be in tears, and they would be tears of rage and fury, confusion, frustration, every emotion all at once. I'd be very upset about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, not not in this case. Um, that's it's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, uh, we went through action. Let's talk about carry profile. So the knife is, it's not what I'd call a thin knife. You can see there G10 is on the thick side, a little thicker than the para three. However, in terms of height, um, nowhere near as tall as the para three or PM2, two knives that are awkward in carry profile and nobody ever complains about, uh, same length as PM2, a little bit longer than the para three. We're looking at steel liners. Uh, which actually have not, to my knowledge, been milled. Yeah, there's no milling on the inside. Not super thick liners, but thick, thicker G10. And then your blade stock thickness. Let me get my calipers out here. Uh, blade stock thickness is probably about 125,000, some may guess. 100, 130,000s? Yeah, okay, 130,000s on the blade. Uh, most of the weight is going to come from the fact that the knife is just not a small knife. I mean, it's just a larger knife, but it's still not heavy. Um, again, you know, considering we're looking at 3.6 inches of both blade and cutting edge, we're coming in at four ounces. That's perfectly acceptable in my opinion. Four ounces is right on the line. It's kind of that, you know, median, like most people are just like, like the, the average person is like, yeah, I'm okay with a four ounce knife. You know, considering how much blade you're getting, especially for the cost. I mean, if you just really like little knives or anything heavier than the Benchmade bug out is just too heavy for you, I guess this isn't for you. But for the vast majority of people um, who are okay with four ounces and for people who actually enjoy a slightly larger than normal knife and you can actually legally carry it, um, yeah, that's not gonna bother you at all. Uh, okay, we went over all that. Let's go ahead and transition into the main part of the review here. So again, we're looking at G10. This is peel ply textured G10. Not aggressive. I'd say it's a medium texture. It's on both sides. So keep that in mind. You know, the pocket clip's going to drag a little bit. It's going to fray up your pants. Not that bad. Um, not the most aggressive G10 I've ever felt. Um, the blade is D2 and it is tumbled. CJRB is one of the few budget knife companies that's doing tumbling on their now, yeah there's other ones out there but most of the time what we see is a satin finish there's two reasons that bothers me number one 
it's an aesthetic thing. If they pick, it picks up fingerprints, you know, I look at it and it's got eight fingerprints all over it, you know? Um, so that bugs me. Um, but it's, that's not that big of a deal. The thing that normally bugs me with a satin finished blade on a budget knife is that these corners have not been knocked down. However, since this has been tumbled, all these corners have been knocked down. So you gain that benefit. You gain the benefit of it not showing wear, fingerprints, scratches, anything as much you can see there. There's an, if, actually a fingerprint on it right there uh, versus the satin finish on my PM2 where if I touch it, it's just like ugh, gross, right? You can see everything that I've touched all over my PM2. Um, I, that's why I liked uh, tumbling better. And it just looks nice. Um, I, I think it'll wear better over time. Um, I just like that. That's a personal preference, but I, I really appreciate that CJRB is doing this on this knife. We have a, uh, I guess we're going to call this a spear point uh, blade. I mean, like because of the drop of it, I've heard a few people refer to this as worn cliff or like drop cliff or modified drop cliff spear point scimitar. <laughs> I'm kidding, but um, this is a, it's like a combination drop point spear point blade. Uh, we have a flat that runs out about 70, 65, 70%. The length there carrying that 130 thousandths out to honestly a reasonably durable tip. I mean, here's the tip up against the PM2. PM2 gets slightly thinner, slightly faster. CJRB is a little bit more durable. However, uh, still be cognizant of that. That is a tip that if you stab it deep into something and then really wrench on it, you absolutely can snap it. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the knife. That's just that's force and physics and that's you know everything is finite right we're looking at d2 here and d2 is not notoriously stuff <laughs> notoriously tough for a semi stainless steel but don't try to pry open bomb shelter doors right that's probably not a good idea you are going to uh, excel at any tasks that require puncturing especially deep into an object like i don't know a thick piece of fruit or something like that or thick packing material things like that that's going to be great it also comes down to a pretty darn thin edge um, that edge is going to be nice and performance oriented, uh, nice and slicey. It's going to uh, excel at a lot of things. And the thumb stud is actually out of the cutting path. So that's really, really cool. This is a Dylan Mallory design. And I actually messaged him on, uh, he interacts with me every now and then on Instagram. And uh, uh, I appreciate that. Um, there was a, the Arkeo. I actually reviewed the small and large Arkeo. And I believe those are both Dylan Mallory designs. I hope I'm getting his first name correct. I'm going to feel really stupid if not. But um, uh, I did not like the small one, but I did like the big one. And I can see here kind of his, his style, right? Uh, Dylan Mallory designs look um, fairly similar, but they all have their own unique uh, uh, appearance. It's not like he's just making the same knife over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, this sort of long, sort of uh, slender, sleek, pointy blade that's got a lot of cutting edge and gets down nice and thin. I, I, I can see that. I can also see it in the lines, the ergonomic lines on the handle. It's the same kind of sort of three finger area right here, two and a half finger area right here, and then this rise at the back by the pinky. Um, it does create for a nice, comfortable ergonomic experience. And that's partially due to the fact that you have so much room on the handle, um, but also that all the chamfering uh, was done correctly. Whoops, something's falling apart right next to me all the chamfering is done correctly and just all the little things are done right. Like this area right here that's cut out so you can engage the lock bar a little bit better. Um, the uh, position of the thumb studs, the position of the jimping, um, everything is just nice. There's no area on this knife that feels uncomfortable except a little bit the pocket clip. We'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, like I was saying, everything's knocked down nicely right here. There's only two body screws. You do have a position on the other side for um, your uh, uh, left-handed carry. This is a right-handed liner lock, but lefties, you can still carry it. Um, I'm right-handed, but I find that I can easily disengage this knife and still deploy it. Can I do a, re a left-handed reverse flick? Drum roll. Yes, <laughs> that finger is not strong, but I can do it. The fact that you can actually do it, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I was sitting around practicing with my, la my left hand and I'm not ambidextrous, which means my left hand is basically just, it's a hand that I use to wave sometimes if my right hand is busy. I don't use it for a lot of stuff. Um, so that's nice that I'm able to actually do that. So lefties, it is usable. I always prefer, especially on a clip like this, I have had a CJRB because of the screws being aligned like this and it's not a pocket that's milled into the G10 to accept the pocket clip. I've had one that had some play. This one doesn't seem to have it. Now, the upside to this is that because there's no pocket milled in, it doesn't leave that pocket uh, on, on the scale. I don't ever care that it's there, but a lot of people really don't like there being a big chunk cut out of the 
the front side of their knife or the back side of their knife. So, okay, um, I can't complain because the pocket clip um, doesn't seem to be moving and there's a position on both sides, so that's great. Um, this is nice back here between the G10 and the liner. Uh, the transition's good, it's nice and smooth. Um, I don't think that the scales need to be so thick. I, I'm not sure why the scales are that thick. They really, they could almost be half or at least two thirds and that would go a long ways. And I, I mean, I don't know that it would reduce the weight enough for it to be meaningful. I think it's just like, it, it, it kind of, it feels a little bit chunky in hand for being such a long slender knife, you know? It doesn't look like a knife that would feel a little bit thick. It's not thick to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't carry this. Nope, I just can't do it. No, not at all. It's just like, oh, the G10 scales are a little thick. Interesting. Um, that's, that's honestly my emotional response to it. Um, the pocket clip functions just fine. Uh, the screws are not recessed. You might have to fight it on your pants a little bit, but I mean, let's be honest here. We're talking about a pocket clip that is a simple and obvious design that you see on a lot of knives, and it's being offered a knife that is ridiculously inexpensive. Um, I don't know that I can complain too much. It is functional. If it breaks, I'm sure they'll work with you to get another one. I'm just guessing, um, but it's, it's not anything that needs to be extravagant. I don't really ever like these dips and they come out here. It absolutely at some point will catch on things. But in terms of the experience like in and out of the pocket, um, yeah, I, I carried this for about three days. Played with it. I had some uh, stories on Instagram or some, some images on Instagram of me sitting outside with it. Um, and yeah, it's fine. Well, I mean, I, I, like right now I'm in sweatpants, but sweatpants or jeans or, you know, regular pant material, um, you're going to be just fine. If you're wearing skinny jeans or you're wearing, you know, really light thin pan material you're going to notice it a little more a little bit more um mostly because of the scales and the overall length of it it's going to be this kind of big heavy not really heavy thing but just a large object swinging around in your pocket but yeah otherwise normal pants are going to be just fine um the uh the rear side here is the adjustment side the blade uh locks up at eh, something like 65 70 percent um, I've been flipping this a lot. The lock bar moved a little bit. Like I have been sitting around flipping this thing over and over and over again. It seems to have settled in about right there. Let's give it a good hard flip so I can show you guys. Yeah, there we are. We're something like 60%. That's totally fine. Locks up absolutely solid. No blade play. And we are perfectly centered. So again, the things that bother me just a little bit here. We've got T6 hardware, okay, that's fine. Um, we have G10 scales that are oddly thick, um, not really that big of a deal. And then we have a, a pocket clip that's kind of got this sort of bill thing going on here, um, and uh, it might catch on some stuff. Uh, blade's gonna be a little long for some people, that's really not that big of a deal. It's also gonna be a little bit delicate at the tip. Again, just use your best judgment. There's really not a lot to complain about here. Um, the next thing I'm gonna say is gonna negate almost all of that. In fact, I mean, truthfully, it should. This is a $35 knife. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't need to do my normal thing where I soapbox and uh, I, I can recommend this knife. It's gonna go on my um, Cheap Knives I Like playlist and it's going on my, uh, my um, uh, Most Recommended Knives playlist. This is probably the best bang for your buck for a budget knife that's out there right now. If they do a smaller one of these, um, that's gonna speak to a lot of people, especially if they can get the blade at like 2.9 inches and really help some people out. That would be super cool. Um, but yeah, and I think honestly, um, I mean, before people start typing, yeah, I have seen that smaller model that they've done with the contoured scales that looks like pretty much exactly that. Something under my fingernail is bleeding, so I guess I caught myself at some point. Oh well. Um, but uh, yeah. This is a knife that you should experience. Um, a lot of times I, I say like, you know, I can, I can recommend this knife, you know, pick it up if you like it. This is a knife that you should, it's, it's kind of like the rat. It's so inexpensive, you should just have one. It's good, it's a good knife, it's a tool, and at that price, it's basically, an, I mean, it's, it's uh, um, uh, uh, disposable. I mean, not disposable, not like, not like a disposable camera, like one cut and you're done, but I'm saying, if you use this knife for six months and you break it, it's still worth 35 bucks, right? I mean, I'm thinking of the tools that I use you know, on a regular basis, right? Now, obviously, you know, 24 ounce hammer, right? It's probably gonna be something you use for years, but something like a pocket knife that folds, it's not necessarily, 
you know, an object of absolute durability, no matter how much it is, no matter what it's made out of, right? Um, the, it's exposed to a lot of different type of types of failures because of the nature of it, right? It's a blade that's on a pivot and a handle. There's a lot of parts that depend on each other, right? So at $35, I, I'm whatever, however long it lasts. I mean, obviously I want it to last more than a month, but honestly, um, this is a knife that I can see lasting a lot of people, you know, a good, I mean, probably three to five years, at least maybe as long as 10. And ah, if you treat it correctly, yeah, this is awesome. Pick one up. I, like I said, right in the description, I will include every version of this. There's gray, green, black, and carbon fiber, I think, and it's probably carbon fiber laminate, but who cares? This thing's awesome. I'm, I'm, this is a great knife. I can see why people like it. Um, so yeah, pick yourself one up. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, I have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, Go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.